Hello everybody, my name is Jim, and on this episode of Bookish Discoveries, we're going to talk about audiobooks. Originally, this was going to be a video about how you consume your books, and it just ended up being way too long. <laughs> so I decided to split these out, but I wanted to do audiobooks first, because this one is the newest way for me to consume books. And just a warning in advance, I do not want arguments in the comments below, please. <laughs> I don't want anybody to gatekeep the way people read because I personally do everything. And as far as audiobooks are concerned, this channel is very audiobook lover friendly. You don't see anything. You see the pretty sparkles and that's about it. So, you know, if I were to sit here and say that I hated audiobooks and it wasn't a proper way to consume books that you read, then my channel would just be a massive contradiction. <laughs> so, mm, we're going to talk about them today and we're going to talk about them in a positive light. But first, I want to talk about how I personally got into audiobooks. So, my reading journey started in 2021. I was watching a lot of fantasy booktube channels and the way that they talked about their favorite books, it was so enthusiastic and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to love all of these fantasy books that they're introducing to me. I tried to get into fantasy and it didn't really work. But one of the books that I tried in the beginning, which I'm not going to say the name of because I would be whipped through the streets if fantasy fans knew that I hated this book and I thought it was boring. The chapters were just way too long and there was too much description. And so I was like, okay, maybe I should try the audiobook. I was still bored. And at this point, I was worried that I wasn't going to enjoy reading, period. I was like, oh my gosh, I am failing to enjoy this book that all of these booktubers that I'm currently watching are in love with. Maybe this just isn't my thing. But ultimately, I ended up finding the genres that I do like. <laughs> so this year, I tried audiobooks again with The Yellow Wallpaper. It is a super short book. So I, I told myself that it would be fine. This would be a good test run to see if audiobooks work for me. I ended up getting through The Yellow Wallpaper in one day, in one sitting. I enjoyed it. I gave the book four stars. Now, I ended up getting the book again physically and bumping up the rating to five stars, and I'll get to that in a second. But this reignited my interest in audiobooks. And since then, I've listened to audiobooks a few more times for some of the shorter books. It was good. It was good for me to try this again. I'm happy that I didn't give up on that one fantasy book that everybody else seems to love that just bored me to tears. But that's how my journey with audiobooks began. The main differences that I find between audiobooks and physical and ebooks is that it is so reliant on the narrator. The Yellow Wallpaper didn't have a bad narrator, but there are different things that a narrator does that maybe I wouldn't do or I wouldn't think to, I don't know, say something a certain way when I read. Inflections are different. Speed could ruin an audiobook. The pacing. Um, and of course, there are certain things that are missing in audiobooks that you get in the physical book. For example, with Horror Store, you are able to see the diagrams of the furniture in the physical book, but in the audiobook, that's obviously missing because there's no visual there. And then, of course, in a book like Tanya Tanya, where both of the main characters are named Tanya, it could get confusing listening to an audiobook if you're trying to keep up with who is writing the letter and who's saying what. There have been some reviews for books that I've given a lot of praise for, where when I go through the reviews, they all have audiobook listed as their method of consumption. And each of those reviews complains about the narrator. So it really puts that emphasis on the importance of hiring the right voice because the audiobook, again, is so reliant on that person that you don't want to mess it up. So it is something to think about when you do get into an audiobook where if you immediately feel that the narrator just isn't going to work for you. Just pick up the book yourself and insert your own inflections, your own pacing, your own way of reading. And finally, I know that one of the arguments 
when it comes to audiobooks is that you don't pay attention to what you're actually listening to, but I have not run into that problem yet. Whenever I'm reading a book, I mean, if a book is really slow and there's a lot of exposition and not a lot's going on, I, I, I tend to zone out anyway. But when something grabs my interest and captivates me, I pay attention, whether that is in written form or audio form. If I'm working and I'm listening to an audiobook, because this was a worry of mine too. I was worried that if I listen to audiobooks, then I would be distracted from my job or vice versa. My job would cause me to uh, lose focus on the book that I'm listening to. But so far, I haven't run into that situation. Of course, I can't be writing while listening to an audiobook because I have a tendency to write what I hear. <laughs> so when I'm doing just basic tasks at work, then, you know, I'm I'm free to turn the audiobook on. The benefit is that I could be, you know, doing chores. I could be washing dishes in the kitchen with my with my AirPods in, following along while I'm doing these menial tasks that I typically hate doing. <laughs> Audiobooks just make these tasks more enjoyable and more bearable. I'm going to be looking into audiobooks more and more. What are your thoughts on audiobooks? Do you tend to listen exclusively to audiobooks? Are you more of a physical book reader or an ebook reader? Leave your comments below, but again, no arguments. I'm keeping an eye out for those. <laughs> we don't want any knockdown dragouts. But I am curious to know what your thoughts are, whether audiobooks are distracting to you, if you have the same feelings that I do about the narrator and how they could really make or break an audiobook. Let me know also of some instances where the narrator completely ruined the book or the narrator made the audiobook that much more spectacular. Leave whatever you want to, and also, if you haven't already, do like the video and subscribe to this channel. I would really appreciate the support. Otherwise, I have been Jim. You've been great. Happy reading. Happy listening. <laughs>